Welcome to ATCN, the Majority Medicine Channel. A 23 year old female presented to ER with complaints of acute onset lower abdominal pain and vomiting since 1 hour. On initial 10 second assessment, airway was patent, coming to breathing, respiratory rate was 16 per minute, saturation 100 percentage on room air, air entry bilaterally equal. Coming to circulation, BP was 100 bar 70 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate was 99 per minute, all peripheral pulsations equally felt bilaterally. Coming to disability, GCS was 15 by 15, pupil sequent reacting to light, pain score was 8 by 10. Uh, at the time, we had given 1 injection PCM, 1 gram IV stat. Uh, she was febrile. Uh, coming to adjuncts, we had taken a CBC CRP point of care showing WBC count of 15.9, hemoglobin 12, platelet 3,59,000 and CRP of 2.7. Coming to history, a 23 year old female with no known comorbidities presented to ER with complaints of acute onset lower abdominal pain since 1 hour. She was complaining lower abdominal pain more at the right lower abdomen and it was initiated few hours after the ingestion of food from outside. It was associated with multiple episodes of vomiting, no history of any fever, loose tools, dysuria or hematuria. Past history, no significant past medical and surgical history. Uh, menstrual history, uh, she was on day 2 of menstruation, uh, she was having regular cycles and no hemorrhagia. Uh, on examination, con she was conscious oriented, no palarectal cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy or edema. Uh, on uh, Tongue was appeared to be dry, so we had started on IV fluid with 1 pint RL. Uh, on per abdomen uh, inspection, there were no visible scars or sinuses, umbilicus was central. Uh, palpation, tenderness over the right iliac fossa and suprapubic and epigastric area, bowel sounds were present. So we had initially started her with pan and emiset uh, and uh, we had done a USG abdomen pelvis uh, in suspicion of uh, appendicitis or ovarian torsion uh, considering her age. So USG was showing mild, mildly bulky right ovary uh, that is 16 cc with a hemorrhagic cyst. Uh, with a uh, cyst with echogenic contents, likely hemorrhagic cyst of size 2.3 into 2.4 cm. Appendix was not visualized separately, however, no free fluid or collection was seen. Uh, so, after this paracetamol, her pain was subsided. When she was orally tolerating, we had discharge after uh, gynec consultation. Okay. They, they were like uh, OPD basis, they can follow. Okay. So, a 23 year old with acute abdominal pain, lower abdominal pain, as you rightly pointed out what would be the differentials that we need to consider right lower abdominal pain uh, so the first as you said appendicitis uh, uh, or it can be just a simple colitis yeah. there was a history of food intake from outside that could attribute to the pain and uh, the second one uh, being a female of this reproductive age group what will be the uh, next common will be as you suggested can be an ovarian torsion over in any ovarian related pathology which can be benign as well as malignant or uh, not in this age group we are not suspecting uh, can be the possible thing and most common thing I feel again it's a urinary tract infection so urinary tract infection will be the other uh, most uh, common differential and maybe a later down maybe a urinary cal maybe a little bit lower down on the differential we will keep it so how will you approach for a female of childbearing age coming to the ED with abdominal pain? How, as an ED physician, how will you go about? Uh, first, we have to. Uh, he, uh, first important thing is that pain. life threatening versus non life threatening. Okay. So, we can say in this way hemodynamically yeah. stable, stable hemodynamically stable. unstable. So, that's a little bit of easy way of uh, okay. evaluating them rather than going into the pathologies as such. We can say. Uh, depending upon her presentation. So, she is an hemodynamically stable female who has come. Uh, hemodynamically unstable, the totally the approach will be totally different. Uh, where the ectopics will come, a uh, ruptured ectopic will come much higher up in the order. And uh, the rest, all those things, even an hemorrhagic cyst, can it cause hypotension? Very rarely, but very rarely it can uh, come with peritonitis features and all. Her uh, ovarian uh, cyst rupture can present with uh, a similar uh, presentation. So, that will be our uh, two different pattern of evaluation. Again, ultrasound is the key and uh, you take that she is on the second day of period. So, still ectopic is ruled out. It can be implantation. Bleed. So, it can be an implantation bleed or that is the one thing or it can be an ectopic related bleed. So, ectopic we need to be very high suspicious uh, whenever we are getting such age group uh, patients and uh, you said regarding uh, what could be the reason for an abdominal pain for an during the menstrual periods. Muscle cramps can be mm. uh, uterine muscle cramps. Mm. Uh, 
but it's more specific in the right side of the lower abdomen so you should think it will be a radiating to the back center abdominal pain which is radiating to the back will be the classical history that you are getting if it's a uterine contraction related but more towards the right side uh, what will be the physiological causes normal causes like this a cyst. Ah, cyst can be a normal thing and a hemorrhage into the cyst is one of the differential diagnoses. Yeah, very rarely you can have hemorrhage into the cyst also like happened to this case which uh, needed to be managed conservatively only. Uh, she is hemodynamically okay. stable but the question that I need to ask is how frequent she is getting this whether she had any previous history of similar episode. So whenever they are having this previous history of the cyst rupture and all they will get more frequently. So. If the child, uh, if they are going to get married, uh, they can again have this more and more uh, uh, related things because once they are having uh, the most common one of the risk factor of hemorrhages and uh, intercourse after that they can have this pain. So again, uh, that will be the one of the risk factors that we need to consider. Do you suspect a pelvic inflammatory disease in this case? Acute onset. Acute onset unlikely. Uh, endometriosis. Uh, can be can, during the periods. Ah, during the periods, that's the most common crampy sort of an abdominal pain, which is not normally relieved, but only happening during the periods yes. time. But endometriosis is another uh, differential. But again, there will have previous history of similar episode. But this girl never had any previous episode. Only during the acute episode she had. So this will be the uh, common differential. So whether you need to put her on any other medications as of now. Only analgesics will be the most important medication. But when it has happened frequently, what needed to be done? Uh, combined, OC, uh, oral combined oral contraceptive pills is the one thing that we need to consider. But that will not prevent 100% ovulation. Mm -hmm. But the symptoms management can be better. Right. So that is the advantage of uh, a combined OC pill for this uh, group of uh, uh, patients. Yes. Then, uh, uh, as, we, uh, as you said, what are the probable differential diagnoses? for an adnexal lesion. Uh, adnexal simple, lesion. Simple physiological cyst can mm. be the corpus luteal cyst. Uh, <coughs> then um, uh, malignancy like dermoid cyst. <coughs> uh, and then ovarian torsion. Okay. Um, ectopic. Ectopic. Then? Um, any um, PID causing uh, 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 tube ovarian abscesses abscess. and all. P PID. But one thing is that PID will definitely have fever sometime. But the no, there was never fever. So, you, our differential diagnosis here it is an acute abdomen. It was not an only, it has happened only once. It was there was no previous history. So, when you are having this frequent episode, that is the time that you need to think whether it is a PID, frequent urinary tract infection, multiple sexual partners, then you have to think of se uh, sexually transmitted diseases and all those things. Then the treatment approach will totally change. We need to put her on antibiotics. So, uh, what is the antibiotic of preferred during for P management of PIDs? Doxycycline. Doxycycline is the preferred regimen. Doxycycline can be given or ceftriaxone uh, also is an ideal choice. So, doxycycline or ceftriaxone. And even uh, there has been a recommendation now for prophylactic doxycycline. Those who are at risk factor for developing sexually transmitted diseases or PID, they can even put them on prophylaxis doxycycline. So, that is the reason like we say regarding prophylaxis of any other disease. Like doxycycline can be given for prophylaxis also in this uh, such a situation. So, our idea, a lower abdominal pain, the most common differential diagnosis is what we have uh, suggested. And another important uh, aspect what you need to consider in her uh, will be other non-gynecological causes. What are the other non-gynecological causes? Appendicitis. Appendicitis. Uh, any colitis. Colitis then. Ureter calculi. Mm. Any hernia. Mm. Mm. UTA. Okay. Hernia causing pain is less likely. Mm. Uh, a Meckel's diverticulum causing on the left side of the abdomen, a diverticulitis, Meckel diverticulitis, that will be the other differential diagnosis. So, our, our aim is very simple, hemodynamically stable, hemodynamically unstable. Hemodynamically stable, we have time for her evaluation. We can start off maybe a routine blood parameters, maybe a urine routine with an ultrasound will be a basic investigation of choice. But hemodynamically unstable, totally it is you have to start resuscitating A, B, C, D resuscitation. Think of about ectopic. The differential diagnosis will change during that limb. And uh, this group of patients, we can just manage with analgesics and she can be uh, followed. Do you want gynecology evaluation in her? 
only single sister sir mm. so and not not a rupture pelvic sister. examination is very important uh, you have to do a proper pelvic examination the, the thing is that when we wanted to look for an ectopic pelvic examination is very very important so unless and until unmarried girl, we don't need a perovaginal examination mm. to be done mm. but routinely a pelvic examination is the key and a trans abdominal sonography is more than enough for initial phase but otherwise uh, if you are suspecting uh, pelvic examination is one of the most important differential diagnosis that you need to keep why you say it is not fitting into appendicitis more frequently more likely there is no fever uh, there is no other uh, uh, you have you had tenderness in the right mild iliac fossa mild tenderness on the right iliac fossa was there so when you look into the alvarado scoring system what is the most important clinical features that you need to consider McBurn's for a mcburnus point of tenderness so that was that so that is the reason why you went ahead with an ultrasound uh, you wanted to give her any antibiotics or anything no, no. so suppose she is coming in the uh, not during her menstrual periods uh, suppose she is coming in the like in the 15th day or mid cycle what would be the most common cause oh, yes. ovulation related pain so the, you should know what are the normal physiological things that can cause that can, the patient can come with pain mitral shimmer pain all those things you need to be very much aware of the ovulation related pain and they can have sometimes mild secretions also so during that ovulatory time there can be hormonal changes mild secretions can be there and there can be associated acute abdominal pain which will be exactly with like 14 to 15 16th day of the menstrual right. cycle it will be mid cycle so that will be ovulation related so again uh, one thing that i wanted to think our idea should be to focus on the hemodynamic status of the patient hemodynamically unstable or sick looking or any pallor anemia syncope they are presenting with our top most diagnosis always will be ectopic pregnancy so uh, anything else that you want to add on regarding this so uh, she had a simple hemorrhagic cyst which was conservatively managed okay Thank you.